The title of today's video is Rates, but before we go on to rates, I'm actually going to do a bit of review. We were just talking about proportional relationships, and let's remember a few things about proportional relationships. Proportional relationships have a constant of variation, which we call k, that is equal to y divided by x. Uh, proportional relationships make a straight line that passes through the origin. So in other words, the y-intercept of that line is zero. And proportional relationships have an equation that looks like y equals k times x. Besides being called proportional relationships, these can also be called direct variations. None of those attributes we just talked about change. It's just that direct variation is another name for proportional relationship. So we're going to start practicing and using that in class interchangeably with proportional relationships. And when you look at direct variations, often the k, that constant of variation, represents a unit rate. Think back to our classwork that we did. We talked about how much it cost uh, per bouquet of tulips. Um, that's just an example of a unit rate. It was $5 per one tulip bouquet. Uh, let's look a little bit more specifically at the definitions that we need to for this. So first of all, a ratio. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities using division. Specifically, a rate, then, is a ratio involving quantities that are measured in different units. But then when you get to unit rate, a unit rate is a rate in which the denominator has a value of one unit. To take any rate and turn it into a unit rate, you just need to divide the numerator by the denominator in that original rate. When you're comparing two quantities, the rate or the ratio or the unit rate, whichever one you're looking at, can be written in two ways, which one's in the numerator and which one's in the denominator. And that's going to affect your outcome it depends on what you're trying to find as to how you should set up the original rate. Let's take a look at this example to get an idea of what I mean when I say that you can write your rates in two different ways. So Jake went 60 miles on four gallons of gas. If I wanted you to take that information, compare those two quantities, and convert it to a unit rate, uh, there are actually two different ways I can do that because it depends on how I set up my initial rate to begin with. Right? One option would be that I could say that Jake went 60 miles in four gallons of gas, or I could say that Jake used four gallons of gas in order to go 60 miles. And depending on how I set up my original rate, that's going to affect what my unit rate turns out to be. Which way probably depends on what question you're trying to answer or what other information you're trying to find. So let's take a look at how we would simplify these into unit rates. So here, I would want to do 60 divided by 4 to find out how many miles per gallon Jake used. Notice I just separated my numbers from the units, but it is still good to write them both out. This allows me to focus on the math. This helps me remember what the correct units I should apply to my answer are. So 60 divided by 4 is the same as simplifying that fraction. 60 over 4 gives me 15 over 1, or in other words, 15 miles per gallon. You can kind of read the division bar as per once I've simplified it to its unit rate. Uh, we also know that that is sometimes commonly referred to as MPG. Now in my other option, option B, I had four gallons over 60 miles. So if I want to know that unit rate, I should do four divided by 60. And remember that I'm talking about gallons per mile when I work that out. So four divided by 60. Yes, I can set up my division box and I can work that out. Or I can just reduce this fraction and get 1 15th of a gallon per mile. There isn't really a shortcut way of representing that. But I think you notice we're dealing with reciprocals. And so it makes a difference as to which one you're trying to find. You can get very different answers if you don't set up your original rate correctly in order to divide it out and find your unit rate. For this do now, you need to start by uh, writing down that we have two different guys who went and brought fruit, 
fruit from two different places. Abe bought four mangoes for $5. Jacob bought nine mangoes for $12. And once you get that written down, you need to then answer these questions. Pause your video now. Let's see how you did. So how much did each person pay per mango? So that's the price per mango. I want to know the money per mango. So that's how I'm going to set up my ratio, my rate. He paid $5 for four mangoes. Notice that I have my numbers separate from my units, which I was showing you on the last page, and that's okay, but we should divide this out, five divided by four. We can also consider the simplifying that uh, fraction there, and five over four as a fraction can't actually be simplified. It might make more sense, though, if we think of this as one and one-fourth dollar per mango, or you can change that. We know that is a dollar twenty-five per mango. Now what about for Jacob? Again, if I'm trying to find out how much he paid per mango, I want money over mango, right? Price per mango. So twelve dollars over nine mangoes. That can be simplified. Twelve over nine can be simplified to four-thirds which is the same thing as one and one-third dollars per mango. Now that's kind of weird to think about one and one-thirds dollars, so we can approximate that to be a dollar thirty-three per mango in this case, because that helps us make a little more sense of what's going on. So how many mangoes per dollar did each person get? All right, so I want to know mangoes per dollar. That means I've got to flip my previous uh, rates upside down and get the reciprocal. So four mangoes over five dollars. So again, I can't really simplify this, but I can also think of this, I can do the division, I can do four divided by five and get 0 0.8 for Abe over here. Or I can leave it as four fifths and realize that means he gets four fifths of a mango per dollar. So he doesn't get a whole mango for each of his dollars. He only gets four-fifths of a mango. In other words, 0.8 mangoes per dollar. Now, what about for our buddy Jacob? So again, I want to know mangoes per dollar. And notice, I keep rewriting that uh, rate in words because that's going to help me make sure I line up my numbers correctly. Jacob bought nine mangoes for $12. So that simplifies, 912 simplifies to 3 fourths. And again, you'll notice that these are the reciprocals of what we were finding before. So he gets 3 fourths or 0.75 mangoes per dollar. So who got the better deal? Well, what do you think? I think. Abe got the better deal. He's paying less per mango. So I can use my answer to part A to say that Abe got the better deal since he's paying less per mango. I can also use my answer to letter B. I just have to think uh, a little bit differently. Abe still got the better deal according to letter B because he got more mango for each dollar. He got 8 tenths, 0.8, compared to 0.75, and 0.8 is a larger number. So since he got more mango per dollar, he got a better deal. So either way, the answer you got should be A, but you need to make sure you understand how to use both of the uh, different types of unit rates in order to back up that answer.